Amen. Beautiful. Thank you, Rock, for welcoming us into worship this morning on this third Sunday of the Easter season. Grace to you and peace this morning. I'm Pastor Heidi Johnston here at Faith Lutheran Church, welcoming you into worship. We'll begin this morning blessing our God, and uh, we've been doing a a thanksgiving for baptism to begin rather than a, a time of confession. So we will do that as well this morning. We begin with this Easter greeting first, and I invite you to respond anywhere where you see bold font in your own space. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Read along with me this morning. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life, to you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God now and forever. Amen. Our gathering song this morning is Alleluia, Jesus is Risen. And Mike Lemke will lead us. I invite you to sing along in your own space. Thanks, Mike. Jesus is risen, trumpets resounding in glorious light, splendor the Lamb, heaven forever, oh what a miracle God has in sight, Jesus is risen and we shall arise, give God the glory, hallelujah. Christ in the center, telling the story to open our eyes, breaking our bread, giving us glory, Jesus our blessing, our constant surprise, Jesus is risen and we shall arise, give God the glory, hallelujah. Us the vine, we are the branches, life in the spirit, the fruit of the tree, heaven to earth, Christ to the people, gift of the future now flowing to me. Jesus is risen and we shall arise, give God the glory, hallelujah. Sorrow be silent, death put asunder, and Easter is bright. Cherubim sing, O grave be open, clothe us in wonder, adorn us in light. If Jesus is risen, then we shall arise, give God the glory, alleluia. of God, Easter forever, 
Behold in Jerusalem, Jesus the Lamb, river of life, saints and archangels, sing with creation to God the I Am. Jesus is risen and we shall arise, give God the glory, alleluia, give God the glory, alleluia. God the glory, alleluia. Amen. What a wonderful way to begin us this morning with those hallelujahs. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We are continuing in this Easter season to sing a Kyrie, and I invite you again to sing along with Mike and myself in your own space. And David Cray is offering our prayer of the day today. Thank you, David. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witness to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, David. Brian Danaher is offering our readings today. Thank you, Brian. 
Good morning. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, the third chapter, beginning at the 12th verse. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety, we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. And our second reading. Thanks, Brian. The second reading is from the first letter of John, uh, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. You're invited in your own space to sing along with Mike Blemke as he leads us in our gospel acclamation. Again, lots of those Easter alleluias. Thanks, Mike. gospel according to Luke, and we all say, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? 
They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. On this third Sunday of Easter, we jump right in at the beginning of that gospel text, like Jesus is appearing. And we're hearing from our Holy Scriptures a similar appearance story to the text that we heard last week, if you remember that. That one was from the gospel of John. So this story is Luke's version. And what's unique, about this telling of Jesus's appearance to the disciples is that he requests something to eat, right? Some similar things are that he shows his hands and his feet. But what's unique in this story is that Jesus asks for something to eat. So we might ask then, why is this part of the story told to us in Luke's version? Why does Jesus ask for something to eat? Jesus has already instituted the Lord's Supper, right? On the night in which he was betrayed. That already happened, that meal. And then there are revelation stories like the road to Emmaus story, which actually happens just before the text that we get today. And in that story, disciples are traveling on the way to Emmaus. Jesus joins them. They don't know it's him and they're sharing their grief about uh, the crucifixion and they don't know it's him until he breaks the bread and blesses it when they're eating a meal together. Well, this meal, this eating that Jesus does is not that kind of meal, it's different. So why does Jesus ask for something to eat? Well, let's look at the most obvious <laughs> answers in the text, right? The text clearly says that the disciples were terrified and they thought they were seeing a ghost, right? It says that. Jesus invites the disciples to see his hands and his feet, to touch him and see that he is not a ghost, feel that he is not a ghost. They rejoice, but in their joy, they are still disbelieving and wondering. They're not convinced that this person before them is really Jesus in the flesh, Jesus raised from the dead. So Jesus asked for something to eat. They give him some fish and he eats in front of them. Eating as a fundamental human function helps prove to the disciples that it is indeed Jesus, their Lord and savior in the flesh. Alleluia. But I offer to you that this part of the story where Jesus asks for something to eat does some other things for the disciples and for us. This moment when Jesus asks for something to eat and then consumes the broiled fish marks a shift in the story. When Jesus arrives in this room where the disciples are hiding, his greeting of peace seems almost lost in their shock and their terror, right? They're confused. They don't know what's happening. And then as Jesus offers his hands and his feet, rejoicing and elation tangle within the disciples and they twist together with disbelief and wondering as the disciples' minds, no doubt, are, are spinning and trying to figure out how can this be? What has happened? What does this mean? Jesus's calm voice that has just spoken peace now asks for something to eat. I don't imagine that Jesus nearly faints and realizes he's starving, right? We don't, we don't hear that in this story. He doesn't seem to cry out in desperation for food. It's possible that he was very hungry, 
But Jesus seems to continue this non-anxious presence as he makes this request for food. Do you have something to eat? And as the disciples focus on getting Jesus something to eat and then watch him eat, the room seems to settle. The spinning minds and the ping-ponging hearts seem to calm. I imagine them now seated together, gathered around Jesus, watching and listening. It is after this shift in the energy in the room that the disciples are poised to hear what Jesus needs to share with them, what Jesus needs to help them recall things he's already said to them. It is then that he can open their minds to understand the scriptures and to bring them further along into this incredible unfolding of God's love song for the world. Last weekend, on that beautiful Saturday that we had, Brian Danaher, Megan Donahue, and I attended a day-long training uh, virtually through the Lombard Mennonite Peace Center. And the training was called Conflict Transformation Skills for Churches. As part of this training, the presenter shared with us about a project called Living Room Conversations that brings people together. Uh, right now they're doing this virtually uh, people who are of opposing views or different demographics to foster healing across those divides, whether they're political or an age divide, a gender divide. In the early stages of this project, the first group decided that they would begin their time, they were not meeting virtually, that they would begin their time sharing a meal. This, the group noticed, almost immediately began to break down barriers and allowed organic conversation to flow. Why? Perhaps because seeing people eat proves they're human, proves they are living, breathing people like you and me. And then there's at least one thing you have in common, right? Seeing someone's humanity opens doors to conversation and relationship. And it softens us, makes us vulnerable enough to seek that mutual understanding, to hear someone out. There are many cultures around the world, right? Where welcoming guests or dignitaries or even those that you're at odds with requires first the sharing of tea or a meal. Now, Jesus doesn't really share a meal with his disciples in this moment, but it is clear that sitting down together and him eating quiets the room and allows their conversation to become more focused and meaningful. Why does Jesus ask for something to eat? Lastly, I offer to you that Jesus asks for food to bring the disciples back to themselves and to their sense of call. It was way back in chapter nine of the gospel of Luke that Jesus and his disciples found themselves followed by a huge crowd, which stayed with them all day listening to Jesus teach until dinner time. And the disciples told Jesus that the people should be sent away, about 5,000 of them should be sent away to buy food. And Jesus says to the disciples, you give them something to eat. In our text today, now that Jesus is raised from the dead and preparing to ascend, it is time for the disciples to carry out the work that they have been trained to do, to feed physical and spiritual hunger with good news. Jesus beckons the disciples out of their confused grief and elation by reminding them of the critical hands-on ministry into which they are called. You are witnesses to these things. Now do something with it, right? They are sent out to proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins in Christ's name. And along the way, they will teach communities how to live into the repentance and freedom of Jesus, how to feed the hungry and commune together to create safe spaces where conversations of eternal consequence may take place. Today, we are invited to sit down with Jesus. There's no broiled fish that I'm serving today, but we consume the word, the word written, the word proclaimed, the word of God in the flesh, in our midst still. We are fed in beloved community, gathering in this way with one another. And we give thanks 
for the Lord's Supper, for the meal that we know still draws us together in the name of Jesus. This scripture is shared with us that we may believe that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead in the flesh and is our living savior. This scene is painted for us that we might allow the peace of Jesus to settle us, to quiet us and calm us long enough to hear the voice of God, the will of God. And Jesus, through the word, today eats in our presence that we might be reminded of our calling to be Christ in the flesh in this world and to see Christ in the flesh of this world, to feed the hungry and share the good news of the forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our risen Lord and Savior. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, this is our call. Amen. Our hymn of the day today is Be Not Afraid, that we would uh, not be afraid of this call that is on us and the story of resurrection. I'm going to share with you a video that Mike made for us, and we'll sing along with that. This one's easy. You may not even need the lyrics after a moment, so we'll sing along. Here we go. We now join our voices with the whole church confessing our faith. We use the words of the Nicene Creed and I invite you please to speak this aloud in your own space. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, 
and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jean Manasian is leading us in prayer this morning. Thank you so much, Jean, and good morning. Good morning. When Jean says, hear us, O God, please respond. Your mercy is great. Thank you. Let us pray. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creating God like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is need of restoration. Provide all the inhabitants of the earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to national, state, and local leaders of people. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer to them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness. Especially Tasto, Kirk, Delaney, Claire, Bill, Vicki, Linda, Brenda, Kirk, Janet, Helen, Karen, Lisa, Maureen, Patricia, Harvey, Jen, Chatal, Lorraine, Dan, Sandy, Jen, Peyton, John, Alice, Bernie, Agostino, Richard, Nancy, Richard, Kurt, Stacy, Jocelyn, Sarah, Walter, Joan, Quinn, Elaine, Jack, Jen, Mary Ann, Frank, Sarah, Mike, Janice, Rihanna, Stan, Bob, and Josh. And we continue to pray for Connie, Kim, Rick, Nancy, Lori, Julia, Betsy, Stephen, Barbara, Lisa, Amy, Jim, John, Gloria, Jimmy, Haley Ann, Fran, Lane, and Helen. Be close to the hearts of the lonely. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Loving parent, you had given us such love that we should be called children of God. Reveal yourself to us so that we in this community of faith will become more and more like you in our mutual love and bold witness. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. 
Jesus Christ, you traveled through towns and villages curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now in the midst of the global spread of the coronavirus that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus and be with the families of those who are sick or who have died. Be with the doctors and the nurses, researchers and all the medical professionals who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In thanks for the gift of life, we celebrate those who have birthdays this week, especially Christina, Sophia, and Masha. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for those serving in the armed forces, especially Robert, Caleb, Patrick, Matt, Christopher, Stephen, Andrew, Melanie, Brendan, Andrew, and Sean. And we pray for all those working around the world for peace. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of all times and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us. Assure us of the peace you have promised that we may be joining with them in everlasting life. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Risen Lord, we thank you for the life you offer to us. We long to gather at your table more regularly, Lord, and we trust that you still come to us now. Grant that we might receive you into our hearts, that we may know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. I receive your peace. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another. Leave a message of peace in the chat. Say hello on Facebook and let us continue to foster that community amongst ourselves. At this time of worship, we always take an opportunity to lift up the spiritual practice of giving, such an important part of our faith lives, to give in response to God's love, to give of our time and our talents and our resources. To give financially to Faith Lutheran, you may mail us a check offering. You may text the word give to the phone number on the screen, 855-294-8814, or you can go to our website, uh, we use the giving platform Tithely. I want to thank Rock Whiting now for offering a musical contribution at this time. Thanks, Rock.
Thank you, Rock. Jean, if you will offer our sending prayer, thank you. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children. You welcome us and abide with us. Satisfy the hunger in us and around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I just want to share a few announcements with you before I bless you to go on your way rejoicing. Uh, today we had Children's Sunday School from 915 to 945. I want to thank Brian and Corrine Nash for joint teaching. I know there was some yoga poses to help tell the story of Jonah and some artwork. I'd love to see the kids active in that way, learning about scripture and Jesus. What a wonderful gift. So that uh, Sunday school will be again on the first Sunday of May, which is May 2nd. Uh, you saw in those scrolling announcements on May 1st, Saturday, May 1st, we're having a food drive here uh, to benefit interfaith social services. That drive is sponsored by our social ministry team. And I believe Larry Johnson will be here from 10 to noon, uh, perhaps with some other rep, yes, with Kevin Johnson and I think Jody Coyne to be here to gather your contributions. If you need a, somebody to come and pick up contributions from your house. I know that Jack and Nina Mayo are willing to do that. So please let them know uh, if you need to contact information, uh, you can get in touch with the church office. We'd be happy to connect you to Jack and Nina. And uh, want to let you know that Smile Sunday will be next Sunday, the last Sunday of the month. Uh, there will, we will be using uh, readings that would be uh, from the NRSV, which is the normal translation that we would use, but there will be special uh, attention given to help our younger folks feel really engaged and noticed during the songs in particular, and also the sermon time. We'll be honoring Good Shepherd Sunday and also giving a nod to Earth Day. So looking forward to that. Uh, the newsletter will be coming out at the beginning of May. So if you have something that you want to share from a committee or a team that you're on, please get information to Mora. And I know there's a council meeting coming up this week. So uh, any information that you feel like you need clarity on, please feel free to reach out to the office here. Those are my announcements for this day. It is my joy now to bless you. Just make sure I got a text. I want to make sure that wasn't an announcement I missed. <laughs> Receive this blessing, please. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. To God of the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and the whole world now and forever. Amen. Our sending song this morning is Christ is Alive, Let Christians Sing. We'll sing along as Mike Lemke leads us. is alive that Christians sing the cross stands empty to the sky that streets and homes with praises ring love drowned in death shall never die Christ is alive no longer bound to distant Living, healing here and now, and touching every place and time. In every insult, rift, and war, where color scorn or wealth divine, Christ suffered still, yet loves the more, and lives where he. Even hope has died. Women and men in age and youth can feel the spirit, hear the call, and find the way 
the life, the truth revealed in Jesus' greed for all. Christ is alive and comes to bring good news to this end. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. And uh, Jean is going to send us out. So now you are ready to respond with that Christ is risen. Thanks, Jean. Jean, are you there? Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. We all say thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Enjoy this postlude to send us out in Christ's joy.
Well, if that doesn't send you out in the joy of Christ today, peace be with you all. We look forward to worshiping together again on Sunday, again on Zoom, 10 a.m. You are invited at 9 a.m. adults to, uh, to log on and we're having a, a connections time. Bring your coffee, bring your breakfast. We'll say hello and do some, some breakout groups. I learned today that Kevin Johnson and I share a sweet tooth. So uh, you never know what you might learn, learn about somebody. We invite you to join. Uh, peace be with you all. We are no longer live streaming on Facebook. So if you would like to unmute and say good morning, that would be